How do you handle time pressured decisions? Does it bring out your worst? Does it bring out your best? What if you're caught with your hand in the cookie jar and crumbs on your face? Do you fess up to the terrible truth? Or do you try to get out of the situation with a lie? Do you buy that last product because there's only one left in inventory? Do you accept the offer because time is running out? Do you tell your boss the truth or what he wants to hear? Let's look at decision making under pressure with a quick discussion on battle drills, deliberate decision making, experience, intuition, tactical patience, triage, factors of time pressure decisions, and finish off with best practices for making time pressure decisions. As leaders, we all need to make decisions, and the better the decision, the better it will be for our teams. Let's jump into this important subject, starting with battle drills. Some situations are time pressured and their requirement for a deliberate decision is eliminated. If there is a fire in the building, you simply need to get out of the building. In these cases, you need a drill, not a decision. And in the military, we call them battle drills. A battle drill is initiated because a trigger is met or on cue with minimal input from leaders without the application of a deliberate decision-making process. It is not a decision, but is a trained response to a given time-sensitive stimulus. On the other hand, there are many models for how to deliberately make a decision. As a retired army officer, I'm very familiar with the military decision-making process, or MDMP, and have even taught this process in several different countries. And then I retired and I earned my Project Management Professional, or PMP, certificate where I learned another unique way of making decisions. You could even just make a decision matrix where you analyze evaluation criteria versus decision options. For example, driving to family is cheaper than flying to Paris. Eating out with your family is cheaper than eating in Paris. Staying for free at your parents' house is cheaper than staying at a hotel in Paris. So in accordance with this matrix, it is a better decision to visit your parents. But even if the matrix says stay with your parents, there are other factors at work in this deliberate decision-making process. You know that the second you get there, your parents are gonna drive you crazy. So you decide that no matter what, you have to fly to Paris to be able to enjoy your vacation. And this is the art of decision-making, not just the science. There's a huge correlation between experience and making good decisions. Make a good decision and reap the rewards. Make a mistake and learn from it. A dear friend of the family once said, if you are going to make bad decisions, then you need to feel it. And this feeling or suffering the consequences helps you to remember not to make the mistake again. Experience is also why our better leaders are usually the mature and older leaders. They have made mistakes and learned from them. They have been successful and learned from it. So if you want to make good decisions, then listen to the right advisors and start making decisions. You will learn from your experiences. A few years ago, I listened to an interesting audiobook about thinking and decision-making called Thinking, Fast and Slow, which proposes that we have two systems for thinking. One is slow, methodical, practical. Think of this as doing long division. One is fast, intuitive, and this involves seeing patterns and using your intuition. It tells a story from Herbert Simon's research with chess masters who asserts that the chessboard is a situation that gives a cue to access stored information and memory, which helps provide an answer about how to move next. The chess masters recognize a pattern in the game and know how to play it to win. In application, Intuition is simply recognizing patterns from stored memory or experience which provides information to help inform decisions. So what we can learn from this is that you should not write off intuition as being less valuable than a deliberate decision-making process because it is based off of recognizing patterns from knowledge and experience. Sometimes when you need to make a decision, it is a good idea to sleep on it 
or to show some tactical patience and wait for the situation to develop. If you are able to, then slow down the momentum and take it from a time pressure decision to a deliberate one. But when time is short and you have to make an important decision, sometimes you need to forget the unsavable, eliminate the expectance, use your triage skills to focus on your priorities. Science has shown that when you are making time pressure decisions, two trends emerge. The first trend is that under time pressure, people weigh negative information much more heavily than positive information. So if you are under pressure to respond to your boss, you might more likely tell him what he wants to hear to save your job than to tell the truth and accept the risk. The second trend is that the more time pressure people are under, the less likely that they will be able to engage in creative cognitive processing. So if you're under time pressure to book the last hotel room, then you will focus on the fear of not getting a hotel room rather than the fact that there are hundreds of other hotels and vacation rentals still available. Let's finish off by discussing some of the industry's best practices for making time pressure decisions. Great decisions are shaped by consideration of many different viewpoints. This doesn't mean that you should seek out everyone's opinion. The right people with the relevant expertise need to clearly articulate their views to help you broaden your perspective and make the best choice. Great decisions are made as close as possible to the action. Remember that the most powerful people at the company are rarely on the ground doing the hands-on work. Seek input and guidance from the team members who are closest to the action. Great decisions address the root cause, not just the symptoms. Although you may need to urgently address the symptoms, once this is done, you should always develop a plan to fix the root cause, or else the problem is likely to repeat itself. Great decisions balance short-term and long-term value. Finding the right balance between short-term and long-term risks and considerations is key to unlocking true value. Great decisions are timely. If you consider all of the elements listed above, then it's simply a matter of addressing each one with a heightened sense of urgency. An 80% solution now is almost always better than the 100% solution too late. Okay, there you have it. A quick discussion on time pressure decision making. Let me know what has helped you to make good time pressure decisions in the past in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to join my life as a special operations team and to forward this video to a friend who needs to see it. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?